Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to my Bennett guide. We're going to be talking about one of the best supports in the entire game. Uh, definitely one of the best four stars in the entire game. He is so good. And I've been saying this since forever ago. Uh, my first video or one of my first videos was me critting 150k on Deluke. And I was using Bennett in that comp and a lot of people were saying Bennett carried me. And honestly, you're right. Bennett's so good. He carries all my comps and I've been getting requested to make a Bennett video for so long now. So here it is. Now, Super important info and one of the main reasons why I'm making this video is that in case you guys don't know, you can currently get Bennett in the shop. If you go to Pie Mounds Bargains, and I know many YouTubers have talked about this, but you can get him in the Star Glitter Exchange for 34 Star Glitter if you need him. I personally got my first Constellation of Bennett through the shop because I already had him, uh, and Constellations on Bennett are amazing, so uh, if you're watching this video in November, be sure to get Bennett from the shop if you can. That being said, uh, let's get right into this video. I'm going to try to make it as detailed as possible while uh, still making the video pretty short because I don't want to waste your guys' time and I also have to study for my final exams. So we're going to keep it short for both of our sakes. So I'm going to make it as straight to the point as possible while making sure not to miss any information. Also, I stream on Twitch most nights. If you guys want to follow me, link in the description. That being said, let's go. So what's the purpose of Bennett? You guys may have seen him, may have seen a lot of praise about him, a lot of people talking about how good he is. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you why he's so good. So Bennett is probably the best support in the game for Abyss alongside Venti. Uh, he's just so good because he can be your solo healer and he gives you a bunch of damage with his elemental burst, which is one of the best elemental bursts in the game uh, for a support character. The reason he's so good is because if you build a lot of energy recharge on him, you can get his ultimate up very often with the energy particles he creates uh, off of his low cooldown elemental skill. And because of that, you can spam his elemental burst and constantly have a bunch of healing and a bunch of damage for all your characters. He's also a four star character, meaning even low budget players can get him or lucky free to play players. And he's available in the shop for this month. So he's very accessible uh, if you have the resources to get him. Bennett can also be played as a DPS if you have someone like a Chong Yun uh, making, you know, proccing that ice field, making you deal a lot of that melt damage. However, I personally have not used him as a DPS, so I don't think I'm qualified to make a DPS video on him. So this video is mainly going to be about support Bennett, which I think is amazing. Okay, so let's quickly talk about Bennett's abilities and talents. Um, so. First of all, if you're running him as a support, you shouldn't be upgrading his uh, normal attack or really his E because they don't matter and you should be upgrading his ultimate as much as you can, his elemental burst. Now the way his elemental skill works, um, basically you can either press it or hold it and then you can uh, either launch, strike twice or three, uh, but I feel like this is usually a bait and I basically never hold it. I will always just press it, get the particles and then swap or whatever, especially because I use him as a support. So the talent you do want to upgrade though is his ultimate and we're going to talk about how that works. So the way Bennett's ultimate works is it'll heal uh, the character that's inside of it. So you can use it and then swap to whatever character needs healing uh, up until 70% HP until like it'll heal them as long as they're under 70% HP. So if they're at like 69 or even 70% exactly, they'll regenerate over that threshold. They'll gain um, a portion of HP. And then on top of that, if the character is above 70% HP, they'll gain a bunch of attack. And that's the best part of this ultimate. So the way it works is when you level it, these ratios all go up. That's why I maxed it. And uh, th so the skill does do quite a lot of damage, especially if you can proc like a melter of vaporize. And then it'll regenerate a bunch per second and it scales off of Bennett's max HP and healing bonus works too. And then your attack bonus is a pretty big amount of your base attack. So this is the most important part. It only scales off of your base attack. Now, what does that mean? That means your characters attack just by leveling up, right? Like if we get him to level 62, which I'll do just for the sake of this video, you'll see his base attack will go up. So it scales off of that. But there's also, um, the reason it's so high is because it also factors in your weapon to your base attack. Now, I usually run uh, Aquila on my Bennett because it is a five-star sword, which means it has a very high base attack. So the way swords work on Bennett is that, um, obviously, three-star swords have less base attack than four-star swords, and then five-star swords have higher base attack than four-star. So if you're going for pure damage, or you're going for a support Bennett that, that wants to give you more damage, you want the highest uh, star, highest tier sword you can get. That being said, there are some amazing four star swords on uh, Bennett. We're gonna talk about that in the weapon section. So yeah, the, the weapon base attack plus your attack that you get from leveling up, that's your base attack. And that's what's gonna um, add on to your alt. Now, a lot, a lot, a lot of people think that feather matters. It does not. I've tested this like a hundred times to make sure the feather literally does not matter. That's why it's the least important piece to upgrade on Bennett if you're running him as a support, because this attack here is not base attack. It is flat attack. And there's a difference between base attack and flat attack. And I just want to clear this up because I get a lot of comments about it. The feather on your Bennett does not to be, need to be maxed because it gives you flat attack and not base attack. And therefore, it does not help with your ultimate. 
In terms of constellation, uh, I usually don't think too much about constellations in my videos because uh, a lot of these like are pay to win and stuff. But just so you guys know, obviously these constellations are all nice, especially if you can like level his ultimate at five, get the six, all that. But honestly, Bennett with zero constellations is amazing, guys. I see a lot of people asking, do I need C1 Bennett for him to be good? No, he's just an amazing support. You don't need constellations. And matter of fact, for most of my like uh, time on Genshin, including the 200k crit on Deluke, my Bennett was C0. And then the main good one, I have two, C2 doesn't really matter that much, but C1 is really, really nice because it does give you, uh, you, you get the attack bonus even when your character is under 70% HP and it gives you a bit more attack. But you don't need constellations for Bennett. Bennett has two other talents, Rekindle, which just decreases cooldown, and Fear Not, which is very nice. Now this you get him by, you get it by ascending Bennett to level 60 out of 70, and that's where I had kept my Bennett for the longest time. So once you ascend him, you unlock this talent, which is very good. What it does is your cooldown of your elemental skill, your E, is reduced by 50% when it is used inside of your elemental burst, which is Fantastic Voyage. So what you can do is um, you can press your elemental burst and then basically spam your, pa your passion overload while being inside of your elemental burst. And then your cooldown will be very short, meaning you can get a lot of energy particles. And uh, it's also a really nice talent if your Bennett is DPS. What this means is that roughly every two seconds, you get to spam your E if you're just using it uh, on charge, which means you get to get a lot of elemental particles and you get to break uh, cryo shields very fast, which comes in very, very handy at in Abyss Floor 12, which is just one of the reasons why Bennett is so good for Abyss. Now let's talk about the best artifact sets on Bennett. There are quite a lot of them, but we're going to talk about early game artifact sets and then late game artifact sets. So for early game artifact sets, you have quite a few options. Some of the really good ones include the Exile set because it gives you energy recharge with the two piece and that's usually what you're going to go for. Two piece Exile can give you 20% energy recharge, which is great because you're mainly using Bennett for his elemental burst, meaning that energy recharge is uh, a very important skill on him. The two piece of the Scholar set is also very good. It gives the same thing as Exile. Two piece uh, will give you that 20% energy recharge, so it's really nice. Scholar and Exile two pieces are great on Bennett because you get more, uh, you get to use your elemental burst more often. Another decent set in the early game is the Instructor, especially the four piece. Um, now I like energy recharge on Bennett more, but um, as a support character running four piece Instructor isn't bad because it increases your other character's elemental mastery. So if you're running Bennett with like a Sucrose, this could be good. Uh, but personally, I like Exile and Scholar better for the early game. Now in the late game, there is one clear best artifact set that just stands out and that's really, really good. And uh, that is the Noblesse Oblige set. Now the two piece set is whatever, gives you more damage on your burst, uh, which would be nice if you're DPS, but as a support character, the best four piece set, or the best set on Bennett is the four piece Noblesse. Now what this does is it increases your um, the attack of all party members by 20% for 12 seconds when you use your elemental burst. And since you're gonna be spamming this elemental burst every time you get it, uh, it'll proc a lot, it'll give your attack, it'll boost your attack percent by 20% uh, for like a lot of the time. So it's just overall the best set for Bennett support. It's really, really nice uh, and by far the best late game one. And you can farm this by doing domains uh, and you can get it in a five star set, which is just so nice. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the artifact stats that you want, the stat priority and all that good stuff. So we're gonna go uh, look through all the artifacts that I have on my Bennett and talk to you guys about what's optimal. And this is gonna be mainly for support Bennett. I might talk a bit about DPS Bennett, but we're gonna be focusing on support for now. So for the flower, obviously your main stat's HP, but for the substat, the best one is energy recharge by far. It's really what you're gonna wanna prioritize. Another good stat though is HP percent. And the reason for that is because the more HP your Bennett gets, the more he heals when he ults. So while normally for most DPS characters and stuff, you're looking for crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, for Bennett as a support character, energy recharge is the best by far, but then HP is also pretty good because as we saw in the talent section, your ultimate, uh, your elemental burst, what it does is it heals off of your max HP. So that being said, those are the main substats you want on your artifacts. So for flower, energy recharge is the best one. For Feather, uh, as we mentioned in the previous section, the attack does not increase your base attack. It is flat attack, so it doesn't help your ultimate, which is why uh, mine is only plus four, because I don't really care about this. But uh, you do want energy recharge, HP if you can get it. Very nice for support Bennett. For the Sands, this is the most important one and the one you should be getting level 20 first if it's a five star. Mine's only 16, but I will be getting it 20 shortly. Uh, and that's because Sands is the only piece where you can get energy recharge as a main stat. So for Goblet, for Circlet, for everything, you can't get energy recharge as a main stat, but for Sans you can, and that's why you want it. Uh, you kind of need it to be energy recharge. This one's pretty good because it gives me attack if I want to deal damage, and it also gives me that HP percent, which is really nice. 
For Goblet, uh, I am running HP% percent because um, it's just the best for a support Bennett. You'll get more healing, and uh, as we've established, you can only get energy recharge on your sands. So here you want that HP for the better alt, and if you can, you want HP% percent with the energy recharge substat. That's just amazing artifact. And then finally, for the circlet, healing bonus is the best for support Bennett because you just heal way more. And and uh, yes, you could run a HP% percent circlet, but as I mentioned in my previous video, for optimal healing, what you want is healing bonus on your circlet and HP on your goblet, and that goes for Barbara and Bennett. And my subsets are pretty good. I got energy recharge and then HP, and then uh, defense is okay. It's not the best, but... And yeah, as you guys saw, I'm running a four-piece Noblesse, which is the best artifact set on late game Bennett. All right, now we're gonna talk about weapons on Bennett. Uh, the first thing I want to say is since his ultimate scales off of base attack, and we know that base attack comes from weapon as well, you do not want to use a 3-star sword on him. Uh, as soon as you can, even if you're a free-to-play player and you don't have any 4-star swords, you can go to the blacksmith and make one, and I recommend that highly, uh, because 3-star swords don't give you very high base attack. But if you have to use a 3-star, the Skyrider is okay because it gives you energy recharge. But yeah, I don't recommend a 3-star sword at all, so I'm not going to talk about them. I'm going to mainly focus on 4-star above, especially because you can craft them as a free-to-play player at the Blacksmith. So the two weapons you can craft at the Blacksmith are the Prototype Rancor and the Iron Sting. And for a support Bennett, the Iron Sting is much better than the Rancor. It gives you Elemental Mastery, which is okay, and it, in uh, it increases your Elemental Damage. It's not a great sword. The, the two blacksmith swords aren't that great on Bennett, but uh, if you have to pick one, the Iron Sting is definitely better. In terms of the actual good four-star swords on him though, the best one is the Favonia sword because it gives you energy recharge and the effect will give you a bunch of elemental particles every time you crit, which means that running crit rate as a substat on your artifacts is even better on Bennett. Um, so yeah, you can see here, crits have a 60% chance to generate a small amount of elemental particles, which generate six energy for the character, which is very, very nice. And on top of that, you have energy recharge as a substat, which is just great. Another pretty good four-star sword is the Sacrificial Sword, which I'm running on my Chi Chi. Uh, it gives you a bunch of energy recharge. As you can see, 50% at level 70 is insane. And the effect uh, basically has a chance to reset your elemental skill. Now that's not that important on Bennett, but it's still a good sword overall on Bennett uh, because of the substat. Now, if you have a five-star sword, I would say it's really good on Bennett because the base attack is so much higher than a four-star sword. As you can see, obviously this is a level 70 versus a level 80, but uh, the base attack, even if this were 80, the base attack on a five-star will always be much higher. And that's why I would recommend using a five-star sword if you have it, such as the Aquila or the other five-star sword, the Skyward Blade. Now, the Skyward Blade is the best sword on Bennett because it's a five-star sword, so it has a very high base attack, right? Higher than all the four-stars, so it's nice on a Bennett but it also gives you energy recharge as a secondary stat, which is something you want. Its effect is also a nice bonus, uh, but you're mainly using it for the high base attack and the nice energy recharge substat. Now, my Bennett isn't perfect. As you saw, uh, my artifacts aren't all upgraded, but a lot of people ask me to show my details in every video, so here are mine in case you're wondering, uh, but it's nothing too special. The main thing you can see is just a very high energy recharge. Now, people always ask me, what's a good party comp for Bennett? And the, the answer is honestly just any comp. Like as long as your team comp works, Bennett can be included into all of them because he, he can DPS if you need him to, if you're running uh, Chong Yun with him. But as a support character, he's just S tier and he's amazing. And he could be used with any comp as a healer and as a um, just a utility support that gives you more damage. I used him in my Floor 12 Abyss as my solo healer, and uh, he worked wonders. I ran a team of Child, Ningguang, and uh, Bennett, and another character that I didn't really use, I think just a cryo character, and I did uh, really well. Bennett was a good solo healer for Floor 12, he did his job, and he honestly carried me through it. So I think Bennett can go well with just about any comp. If you run him with a Pyro DPS, you can have that double Pyro Resonance, which is really nice. And if you're running him with someone like Child, a Hydro DPS, what's really nice is when you use Bennett, you can use his E and his Q, and then when you swap to Child, everything's gonna be Pyro afflicted, so you get a nice Vaporize hit. But yeah, the main thing is when you're running Bennett, you don't really need another healer. So like, for example, if my Abyss 1 team has Barbara as a healer, my second half team can have Bennett as a solo healer, and that's just perfect. You don't need another healer with him. He, uh, he really does well. In my opinion, he's probably the best support for Abyss uh, alongside Venti. Venti and Bennett in Abyss are just monsters. Now, if you guys still aren't convinced on how good Bennett is, personally, I'm not the type of player to usually play characters like Bennett. I find he looks weird, he looks weak, and he doesn't look like the type of character I would normally play. I like characters like Fischl, like Deloop, that pack a punch and that look cool. But for me to be advocating so strongly for Bennett, uh, I think is the biggest proof of just how good he is because he's honestly so good and I would not be playing him if he wasn't this busted. And I, uh, if, I'm just telling you guys that if you have him, you gotta use him. So I hope this video has convinced you and has showed you how to build them and how to make your, your four-star character a broken support. 
So that about sums it up, guys. I hope I kept this video short enough while giving you guys all the information you needed. And I hope you guys use Bennett because he's so good and he'll carry you through the abyss. I promise you that. Now, I said this at the start of the video, but I stream on Twitch most nights and I, I really, really enjoy it. The support I've been getting has been amazing. So if you guys want to come watch, uh, link will be in the description. So I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, I hope this guide was helpful. I read most comments. So let me know if I missed something or if you guys just liked it, didn't like it, whatever. So that's about it for this Bennett guide. Let me know what you guys want to see next. Subscribe if you want to. If you don't, that's okay too. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.